is Kristen at Running Shoes Guru. Thank you for joining me today for a quick look at the GT2011. I found that this version reminded me a lot of the earlier models of the 2000, such as the 2004, before they started trimming it down and really focusing on lightweight speed in about model six. The last couple years, they've been beefing that midsole back up again, and this year we see that it continues to have the light truss system under the heel and midfoot that they introduced in the 10. It has a very thick medial um, midsole under the heel to counter early inward motion. Towards the front of the shoe, we have Flight Foam Blast, which is an upgrade from last year where they had regular Flight Foam under the forefoot. It's a nice and soft foam that really feels nice into the, in that toe off. Moving to the upper, we continue to have a moderate heel counter. I've always appreciated the way my heel fits in an Asics. We've got nice padding around the heel and it locks my foot in there. The heel this year includes this updated wing feature on each side, which is kind of a fun aesthetic with a reflective strip running up the back of the shoe. And this entire upper has little pieces of glittery flex in the shoe to, to highlight visibility in low light. This double layer jackered mesh is very comfortable. And as you go forward in the shoe, there's some nice breathability under the forefoot and a cap around the tip of that toe. The tongue is well padded, especially in this middle part. You can see that there's some breathable holes there. Uh, I do appreciate this upper quite a bit. But what I found is that this year I don't have quite the there's not as much of a smooth transition this year into toe off, so I appreciate this shoe more for medium to slow paced runs. I found on some long runs, I was also running, uh, testing the Gel Nusa Try, and I love that shoe for speed, but it didn't quite have the support, and I found myself going back to the GC2000 for more of those medium to long runs. Looking at the outsole, we see the Asics High Abrasion Rubber covering much of this outsole and bringing durability to this shoe. The shoe functioned moderately well for grip. I really had no complaints. The part that I think will wear out quickest in the shoe will be this thin upper layer of the upper. It's nice and soft and thin, and if it does fray a little there, there is another layer underneath it. So in terms of all over function, it will probably still work out pretty well. Looking at the laces, there's a nice loop on the tongue that you can send the laces through to anchor that down so it doesn't move around. Again, this tongue is, is very comfortable and really pads the top of my foot well. The fit this year is just slightly shorter than last year's shoe. It's the first time I've had to go up a half size in the GT2000. The new design fits a lot like the Brooks Adrenaline. One big difference between the GT2000 and the Adrenaline is that 2000 has an 8mm drop and the Adrenaline has a 12mm drop. So that might be a very determining factor for you when choosing between these two shoes. Otherwise, be sure to check out the full review on RunningShoesGuru.com so that you can get more comparisons with similar shoes and some more details about the shoe. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you here next time.